Welcome back to Builds Not Projects. My name's Spencer. Today I am going to be working on my 1UZ swapped 89 Toyota pickup. Um, I'm going to be putting in a new rear differential carrier and ring and pinion and wheel bearings. Um, I recently had a mishap with my rear differential and something is very broken inside. So we will find out what I broke. Alrighty, so to start out, I have the rear end jacked up on jack stands. I am going to pull wheels off of both sides, pull the brakes, well at least pull the drums off, um, and then I will pull the axle shafts out so you unbolt the whole backing plate. Um, and I'm going to be doing wheel bearings so I will take the brake lines off and everything and slide the entire axle shaft all the way out. Um, and then I'm going to pull the rear drive line under here, pull rear drive line off, and then I'm going to pull the third member out of the center of the differential. So once that comes out, I can put my new limited slip carrier in, my new ring and pinion, and all the bearings, and then we'll go back together. Alrighty, now that the tire and drum are off, we can take and we can pull this um, e-brake cable loose. Um, it's just a clip and a pin that can come out and then we'll take these four bolts out here um, and we also got to pull this brake line loose here so we'll pull the brake line loose pull those four bolts pull that off and then the whole axle will slide out with the backing plate and everything so let's get going <laughs> Okay, so after draining that differential, this is the drain plug. It's got a magnet on it. We're going to see what... So there's some large, fairly large chunks in there. Looks almost like small pieces of gravel, but it's pieces of metal. Okay, so I got this axle shaft out. Um, now I can go to the other side, do the other side. Um, I'm probably not gonna show you guys that since I already showed you this one. And then once that's out, um, I can pull the rear drive line off and then pull the third member out. So I'll just remove all those bolts there, pull the third member. And then we can see what the damage is. Alrighty, pretty sure I found the problem. Um, there's a bunch of teeth gone. There's, you can see all the, all of the broken teeth on the ring gear. So, we'll uh, get this thing apart. And uh, I got a whole new carrier and everything just with all the metal that went through it. Because um, this is a Eaton, Eaton True Track limited slip. Um, it's all gear drive inside. And I figured I'd probably better change it with all the metal that went through. So um, new ring and pinion bearings. And then 
new Eaton True Track I'm gonna put in. So the pinion doesn't seem to have any teeth really missing off of it, but it uh the ring gear sure does. So yeah. That's what the uh that's what the noise was, so we'll uh, get it all taken apart. Um, new bearings and everything and we'll go back together so stay tuned okay so I got the carrier and new bearings and new ring and pinion all put in um, I got the uh, what's that called I got the pattern done um, it all looks good um, so now I can put all that back in. I didn't show any of that. I didn't do any sort of a walkthrough on that just because there's so many other videos on it already on YouTube. Um, it's pretty easy to find another video and I just didn't have the time to do a good explanation on it. Um, and I don't do enough of them to be able to do a very good explanation on it either. Um, so it's all done. The true track limited slip is in. I've got the differential all cleaned out. The axle housing all cleaned out now. All the pieces of metal. Um, there was a large amount of metal in the uh, bottom of the axle as well as what came out of the third member when I had it out. Um, so now I can put the third member back in, silicone it up, put the third member in, put the uh, axles back in, and then once I get all those put in and everything, I'll have to bleed the brakes, and we'll go back together. I was going to change wheel bearings, but they're not bad, and I'm just going to wait because I'm going to do a disc brake conversion, hopefully in the summertime. Um, get a disc brake conversion done and to do that I have to pull all that stuff off anyways to take the backing plate off so I might as well just wait and do it then um, so we'll go back together and then I'm gonna fill it and run it for a while and then I'll end up draining it again just to try to help clean out any residual um, bad fluid that's in there anywhere um, I'm gonna Normally I, I have been running 80, 90, but I'm gonna, cause that's what factory calls for. But um, with the one UZ and everything, I'm gonna start running, I'm gonna run 80, 90 for the first time. And then I'm gonna change it out and run 75, 140, just because under heavy load um, and such, it gives a little more cushion on the gears. So I'm gonna try that and see, run the 75, 140 full synthetic. Um, so we'll go back together and it'll be all done. Thanks for watching this guys. Um, if you haven't already, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. There's going to be more videos of this pickup coming out as well as there's going to be some more videos on the Odyssey soon. A little sneak peek of the Odyssey. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to slide the axle in um, part way just, just until these bolts start to come through. Um, and then I like to line up the brake line. It just makes it a lot easier to be able to line it up um, when you can move the axle around a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, we'll get that put together, bolt the axle on, hook up the parking brake cable um, and then we can put the drum on and bleed the bleed the rear brakes um, just standard bleeding procedure nothing special bleed those and then once that's done I can 
fill up that rear diff and it'll be ready to go. Thank you.